For my history 497 capstone, I researched women in the Russian Revolution. Alexandra Kolontai was born in St. Petersburg, Russia in the 1870s. She was known as a diplomat, professional revolutionary, and an author. Falling into radical politics by joining the Russian Social Democratic Labor Party, she founded the Zentendel, or Women's Department, which fought to improve conditions of women's lives in the Soviet Union. Through the founding of the Zentendel, this made Kalantai the first woman in history to be a member of a government cabinet. She was an internal critic of the Communist Party and a contributor to Marxist feminism, often criticizing bourgeois women for not aiding middle and lower class women. Her legacy is with classical Marxism, along with Vladimir Lenin and Leon Trotsky. The activism of women revolutionaries in Russia related to the revolution because they were the original catalysts in February of 1917. Revolutionaries similar to Kalantai started their activism in the 19th century, with many of them becoming members of the Russian Social Democratic Labor Party in the late 1800s and continuing on with their political work throughout the early 20th century, witnessing World War I and then having leading roles in the revolution and later in the Bolshevik government. I became interested in gender studies in Eastern Europe last semester when I took History 320 with Professor Contreras. I wrote a book review on military masculinity and post-war recovery in the Soviet Union, which talks about the remasculinization of Russian society after World War II. Specifically, the topic of woman in the Russian Revolution interested me because I grew up learning about the demise of the Romanov family and Anastasia, and I wanted to explore more about that history. Through this presentation, I hope to provide listeners the greater understanding of women before, during, and after the Russian Revolution and show how the successes of women in the revolution were pushed to the side through the rise of fascism in the 1930s. Throughout the mid and late 20th century, Western European and American historians have characterized the state of women in the Soviet era as deeply unequal and not relative to the broader Soviet history. Women's stories, legacies, and accomplishments from early 20th century Russia are often diminished in educational settings. But my story shows how women were integral to the revolution, playing important roles as revolutionaries, politicians, and authors. Before the revolution, Russia was in a period of rapid industrialization and women were not heavily involved in the workforce or economic facets. According to author Barbara Clements, Throughout the 20th century, women were often seen as members of the unskilled, inarticulate, and militant labor force that many revolutionary groups found appealing. Scholarship surrounding women in pre-revolutionary Russia focuses on the daily life of women and their families before it was upended, as well as specific revolutionary leaders like Vera Figny or Lydia Dan, to show how there was a rise in women who were involved political and revolutionary moments. Writings about the different women revolutionaries changed the historiography of Russian literature because it showed how these revolutionaries were seen solely as handmaids to their male counterparts in the eyes of the Soviets, even though they accomplished so much throughout their life. Between 1880 and 1917, there were many women revolutionaries but by the time the 1930s came around, they had been washed away from history by the Soviets who wanted to construct foundational myths of gender norms. During this time, women were pushing universities and places of higher education to accept them as students. This was successful. And by the early 1900s, Russia had more women lawyers, teachers, and doctors than any other European nation. Although, this was almost always reserved for bourgeois elite women 
who resided in larger cities. Today, monographs written about the revolutionary era of Russia focus on adding valuable and accurate scholarship about these women. Russia was a country with strict social classes and the revolution impacted peasant women much differently from the women of the bourgeoisie. Peasant women also had the most to lose if the revolution was deemed successful because they lived on farms and had large families with many mouths to feed. The ongoing urbanizing and industrializing of Russian society did not impact them because of their rural lifestyle. By 1900, around 85% of women still lived in the countryside. They earned their living from agriculture with the nobility class still owning the land that they resided on, which resulted in extreme poverty for the families living there. Women in the peasant class had high rates of literacy, but the fear of the unknown and wanting to abide by more conservative values made peasant women resist change because the farm lifestyle was all they ever knew. Whereas the women in the bourgeois class readily accepted and protested change in the early 1900s. And this started with the February revolution. The state of large peasant families aided in the revolution because many people saw them as new workers in an increasingly industrializing and urbanizing society. On February 23rd, 1917, in the capital city of Petrograd, thousands of Russian women gathered to the streets to protest increased bread prices and the end of the Great War. To historians, this marked the unofficial start of the revolution. They refer to this event as the February Revolution. After 10 days of protesting and fighting with the police, the February Revolution forced Tsar Nicholas II to abdicate his throne after receiving much press pressure from his closest advisors. This ended hundreds of years of rule through the Romanov house. The February Revolution also created a provisional government, which granted things like women's suffrage, legalizing abortion, and gave women equal rights in aspects of civil service. Historians who study this time period focus their historiography on two main points. First, how women were largely responsible for the revolution of 1917, because they were the ones who started the original protests in February. And secondly, how early 20th century Russia is dismissed as a very conservative country by many Western scholars. Even though they were the first major country to give women suffrage and legalized things like abortion and divorce for women. The revolution magnified the transformations of women's wartime roles because of their expanded rights. Now women could elect to join the army if they wanted to. And this expanded the abilities of the Russian army as a whole. Many historians agree on how the Russian revolution launched long overdue social and economic changes to Russian society. But also the revolution failed to erase the patriarchal culture that was so ingrained in their society. Peasant women migrated to more urban areas, oftentimes leaving behind large and controlling families. They were in search of new job opportunities in factories and a way of life that allowed them more control over their destiny. With the rise of the Bolshevik party in the 1920s, they established legal equality for both men and women. Politician Vladimir Lenin supported this and thought that women were the untapped potential source of labor. He was known to say things like, petty housework crushes, strangles, stifles, and degrades the woman, chains her to the kitchen and to the nursery, and wastes her life on barbarously unproductive 
petty, nerve wracking, stifling and crushing drudgery. One of Lenin's goals was to economically free women from men. According to Barbara Engel, women in the workforce rose from 423,200 in 1923 to nearly 885,000 by the early 1930s. The Soviet constitution promised equality for women, stating that women in the USSR are accorded equal rights with men in all spheres of economic, state, cultural, social, and political life. For this new class of recently liberated younger women, religions started to fall to the wayside and things like working and socializing became more important to them. Throughout the revolution, women worked as catalysts, taking to the streets, demanding lower bread prices and not leaving. Eventually, this led to the Bolshevik revolution, the rise of Vladimir Lenin and the communist party in Russia. Women's roles changed drastically with suffrage and legalizing of abortion and divorce. Many women fled to the cities and supported the revolution embracing a new found freedom. Their contributions to the revolution were shut down by many scholars and the Soviet Union by the 1930s due to the Soviets wanting to create a more masculine facade to show the world. This project has the possibility to lead to more gender studies of the Soviets throughout the 1900s, bringing up questions such as were women more liberated under communism because of the state sanctioned gender equality in the workplace? The Soviets did want to present a masculine face to the outside world, but state sanctioned gender equality in the workplace is in the constitution. Essentially, did women have freer lives under communism because of a forced sense of equality 